Hello and welcome to another Spectrum Geeks video. It's that time of the month once again for my solar stats for my solar PV system here in Worcestershire, UK for the month of December 2021. So I hope everybody is doing well. I hope you had a good Christmas and a good new year. And thanks for tuning in to this monthly solar update. So I'll go through the usual process that I always do. Just give a quick recap on the system that I have, how it's performed in a couple of key moments over the year. Then I'll talk about how things have gone in terms of the data I have for my power wall, uh, my electric vehicle charging and my electricity tariff. So let's start off with a reminder and a recap of my solar house setup. So I have 30 uh, PIMAR panels, totaling nine kilowatts of solar panels on my roof. On the back of each one of those is a solar edge optimizer, and they all connect back to a six kilowatt solar edge inverter. Connected to that, I also have a Tesla Powell 2, but with the original version one gateway, so no ability to island or run my house from the power wall in the event of a power outage. Connected to that, I have various My Energy devices as well, the My Energy Hub and the My Energy Harvey, and these allow uh, wireless CT clamp connections to my My Energy Eddy, which I use to both heat hot water uh, off peak and also using solar surplus. And I also have the My Energy Zappy Generation 1. And I use this to charge our electric cars, both a uh, Polestar 2 and a 40 kilowatt Nissan Leaf. And again, we charge these either off peak or from surplus solar as well. In terms of the energy provider we're with, we've been with Octopus Energy now for over two years. Uh, in general, it's really good customer service, but probably most importantly, um, good rates of tariff. So right now, my electricity is using Octopus Go. Uh, this is an off-peak tariff, so from half past midnight to half past four in the morning, uh, I'm only currently paying five pence per kilowatt hour, and then during peak time is 13.72 pence per kilowatt hour. And on gas, I've just moved to the flexible octopus um, tariff because my fixed uh, gas uh, option expired, and I'm currently paying four pence per kilowatt hour for my gas. Now, something to make you aware of if you are thinking about moving to Octopus Energy, there is a link down in the description. If you connect uh, or sign up to Octopus using that link, both you and I both get £50 credited to your account. One thing I will point out, at the end of this month, my current Octopus Go tariff is expiring and I'll move to their new version of the Octopus Go tariff. Uh, and one of the subscribers and members of the Spectrum Geeks Discord group actually posted just this week, the new tariff prices for that. So I'll just mention those to you now so you're a little bit aware of what you're what going into. Because obviously most people are aware, energy prices have significantly risen uh, over the last few months, but I still think Octopus Energy is a good company to be with. And the Octopus Go tariff makes a lot of sense if you have electric vehicles uh, and home batteries so you can utilize off-peak charging. So those new rates for Octopus Go are going to be 30.23 pence in terms of the peak energy cost. So a significant ramp up uh, from what I'm paying today. And the off peak will go from five pence to 7.5 pence per kilowatt hour. So again, uh, is a bit of a big jump, but it does mean that the off peak is now even more valuable uh, than the peak energy costs. And I still think it makes great sense uh, for someone like me that has the ability to obviously charge electric vehicles off peak, also do a bit of um, heating of the hot water during off peak energy as well, and obviously charging both our electric cars. So if you are thinking about moving to Octopus Energy, again, consider using that link down below and you and I both benefit. So let's jump in to the stats for December. Been terribly overcast and generally miserable throughout uh, all of December 2021 here uh, in the West Midlands in the UK where I'm based. Uh, as always, I'd be interested in knowing how your solar system has performed uh, down in the comments along with any questions or feedback that you might have as well. So if we look at um, the slide, you can see, so we had 
Um, pretty low production, so 131 kilowatt hours is all that we produce with solar for the month of December 2021. Uh, we had a little bit um, of export going on, which was 3.63 kilowatt hours for the whole month. Uh, and I mentioned this um, before, my goal is always to export as little as possible. I want to maximize uh, it in my house, either using it to power my house, charge my battery, charge my cars, or heat my hot water. So I'm actively not looking to do any exporting. If you look over, um, again, I'm still in the energy balance place, large consumption, so 1.52 megawatt hours of electricity consumed during December. Now, I work from home, as does my wife, and we have many servers and computers and monitors and all sorts of stuff running. And also been over the Christmas period, we obviously had the kids at home more, so they've been running computers and Playstations and charging iPads and phones and all sorts of stuff. And obviously lots of cooking as well. We do all our cooking with electricity. So meals on Christmas day, meals on Boxing Day, obviously meals over the Christmas period when we're all off. So I was expecting it to be a higher um, uh, energy consumption month, but you'll see later on in the slides uh, what that meant in terms of uh, cost to us. In terms of production, you can see as the month of December started, um, we had a couple of days that weren't too bad, uh, but then it pretty much went downhill right towards the end of December where hopefully January is starting to peak up again. So again, 3% of our usage was exported. And you can see generally consumption was pretty high over the whole of December. Uh, another reason for that is here in the cave, the heating I have is by an electric panel heater. So again, unless I wanna freeze my bits and bobs off, uh, I like to have the heating on here, obviously that, um, uses electricity as well, mainly from my, my power wall, but on some days over December, the power wall didn't always fully charge off peak. Uh, so there was obviously a bit more peak usage happening. The most interesting thing to see is on that very far right-hand side graph, December 2021 was the worst solar performing December I've had since I had my solar install. Significantly less, you can see there, it's probably um, about a third less um, solar generation than previous months. So it really does back up the fact that December 2021 was pretty crappy. So if we look at the couple of days that are of particular interest for my solar PV system, it's probably pretty clear uh, from the graphs that we just saw. My highest generation day was the 2nd of December 2021, where I had 19.3 kilowatt hours of solar generated. And you can see, um, you know, there was a couple of times during that day where we did a little bit of export, um, but in general, most of it went into the house. Our highest consumption day was the 22nd of December, 2021, which actually surprised me a little bit. I thought it would have been the um, 25th, which we'll come on to again uh, in a moment. But again, with lots of cooking, uh, toys being open, things being run, PlayStation games being played, I thought it would have been the 25th, but it wasn't. And then our highest export day, again, was on the same day as our highest generation day, the 2nd of December, uh, where we exported 1.19 kilowatt hours. A slide about it in here, which is just of interest to me, and I think is kind of funny as well. In the past, most Christmases, since I've had solar, I've been able to cook all my Christmas meals from solar energy, not having to pull from the grid at all. So I was obviously hopefully looking forward to having that happen uh, here in December 2021, but it didn't happen. As you can see here, um, 2021, we obviously, in the, in the gap that you can see, that's when we're running from the power wall, but then we have to start pulling from the grid uh, pretty early on. Then in 2020, you can see there, we were able to use solar to cook our Christmas meal and everything, hardly any uh, grid pull outside of the off-peak hours. Same for 2019 as well. Uh, and 2018 was a similar kind of crabby year, um, where obviously the solar generation wasn't as good. So maybe we have another two years of good Christmas day cooking with solar energy and then it'll be a down one again, but we will see. I'd be interested again, how was the weather for you on Christmas day? Were you able to cook your Christmas turkey or ham or whatever it decided to have with solar energy? Okay, if we move on quickly to the Tesla Powerwall 2, I mention this uh, every month, I probably should make a change this slide. Tesla made changes to the app. It's now much more difficult to see um, the, the amount of kilowatts that went in and the efficiency. But all I can tell you is I got 389.9 kilowatt hours of energy out of my Powerwall. 
The large majority of that will have been from off-peak charging that I could then use at peak times, but a little bit of um, solar dribbling would have gone in there over December, but as we already mentioned, not a lot because the weather was pretty poop. If we then look at the My Energy Eddy, so as mentioned, I use the Eddy in two configurations. One is to boost uh, the hot water during off-peak times. We, have, we run that for two hours just to give us enough uh, hot water to use for the day as a family of four. It's very well insulated, so that does us um, just fine. And obviously any little solar surplus we have uh, can also go in to the Eddy to heat the hot water um, as a secondary option. Our priority is to charging electric vehicles, but if there's not quite enough to charge a car, it will go into heat and hot water. So you can see there, 171.29 kilowatt hours of off-peak energy went into heating our hot water. 3.21 kilowatt hours came from solar, which meant was a total of 174.5 kilowatt hours of electricity in terms of heating water in our house. Next, if we move on to our car charging, even though it's December and obviously not doing the school runs every time, we still had um, some work that we were doing uh, over December, so obviously popping out, still doing a reasonable amount of travel. No solar surplus went into charging the cars at all uh, in December, but all our charging was off peak. So 353.99 kilowatt hours of energy went into charging both of our electric vehicles. And again, all of that came from um, off peak electricity. So if we look at my bills for December, so how much did my house cost me to run in terms of electricity and gas? You can see here that um, 353.5 kilowatt hours uh, came from peak electricity, 1045.4 came from off peak electricity. So as you can see, the large majority of my electricity is coming from off peak energy. And as a result of that, it means that my um, average cost per kilowatt hour is only 6.86 pence per kilowatt hour. Obviously, I expect that to increase uh, in um, February, because obviously it's end of January is when my current Optimus Go deal comes to an end and I move on to the new tariff, and that will probably increase, probably, I'm going to guess, to about 8 pence per kilowatt hour average, but we will see how that works out. So my total electricity bill um, that I had to pay Octopus Energy in December was £108.51. And, and in terms of gas, which we only use for heating our house, it's, uh, we used 1,061.8 kilowatt hours of gas, and that cost us £50.58. And so that's our total energy costs for the month of December. In terms of um, obviously how I calculate the solar payback, I do a video on this every year to see how my solar system is performing and how the payback is coming in terms of the cost of buying the panels uh, and the battery and having it all installed. So I'm still uh, on the feed-in tariff. I got in the feed-in tariff right at the end. So I do get feed-in tariff payments as well. So for the month of December, I got paid £5.46 for the feed-in tariff generation. I got paid £3.65 for the deemed export. So basically whether I export or not, I get paid for 50% of what I generated as potential export. So I got paid £3.65 for that. The, term, the amount of solar that we generated, which means we didn't have to pull from the grid at peak times, saved us £17.46. So the total amount of uh, electricity, either savings or feed-in payments, came to £26.57 for the month of December. So that goes into our kitty for our solar payback. And I think off the top of my head, uh, we're looking at about nine years uh, in terms of the payback for our solar and battery insulation. As mentioned as well um, before, we don't try and export anything if we can, but if we were running the setup that we are running and we were getting paid for the little bit of export, we'd only got paid 20 pence for the amount of electricity we exported in the month uh, of December, 2021. So that's it. That concludes the monthly update for December 21 for my house, my solar PV system. Hope it's been interesting. If it has, please consider liking the uh, video. It really helps me out and the YouTube algorithm recognize the channel. Feel free to leave any comments and questions and feedback down uh, in the comments section, along with uh, how your system has performed so other viewers can get an idea for different comparable systems to their own. And um, yeah, as always, consider subscribing if you haven't done already and press that bell notification icon. Uh, all sorts of other videos uh, here on Spectrum Geek's channel. Everything has a pretty much a playlist. So if you're only interested in solar, you can just watch the solar playlists. 
If you're interested in reviews, there's the reviews, playlists, electric vehicles, all sorts of stuff. There's hopefully a playlist for you. Thank you very much for watching. Until the next video, take care of yourself and goodbye for now.